Good day everyone. Welcome to the CodeZultant channel. Today, our discussion will be focused on the service and feeder load calculation for multifamily dwelling units. In our previous videos, we determined the service and feeder load using the standard method and optional method for single-family dwelling units. We will also discuss code rules for multifamily dwelling units. To illustrate these concepts, we will use sample projects and apply all the relevant provisions. Let's get started. Our sample project consists of a multifamily dwelling unit with 10 typical apartments, a utility room, and an administration office. The administration office will have an additional load of a 1 horsepower air conditioning unit, in addition to the standard electrical loads like street lighting in common areas. The service entrance will be positioned on the exterior wall of the utility room, whereas the panel board and meter center will be located inside the utility room. We will be using the same sample project as shown in the previous videos for the typical apartments. Each typical apartment has a plot area of 120 square meter. Based on the calculations from the previous videos, the load breakdown is as follows. General lighting, 1752 volt amperes, which includes receptacle outlets in general areas, bathroom circuits, garage circuits, and lighting loads. Small appliance branch circuits, two circuits at 1500 volt amperes each. Laundry circuits, 1500 volt amperes. Electric clothes dryer, 5000 volt amperes electrical cooking range 6000 volt amperes split type air conditioning unit 1.5 horsepower room air conditioning units three units at 1.0 horsepower each storage water heater 4.5 kilowatts booster pump 1.5 horsepower what are the code rules for multifamily dwelling units as per subsection 2.10.2.8b it is specified that branch circuits within each dwelling unit should solely supply loads within that particular dwelling unit or loads associated exclusively with that dwelling unit. This means that receptacle outlets, for instance, should be designed and allocated specifically for each dwelling unit. Including receptacle outlets from other dwelling units in the branch circuit of a different dwelling unit is strictly prohibited. Dwelling unit branch circuits are intended to supply power only within or associated with the respective dwelling unit. Furthermore, in the same subsection 2.10.2.8b, it is stated that branch circuits installed for public or common areas, such as lighting, central alarm systems, signal systems, communication systems, or other purposes, must not originate from equipment that supplies an individual dwelling unit or tenant space. For instance, lighting for common areas is not allowed to be fed from a tenant's panel board. These branch circuits for common areas should be independently owned and managed by a single person or entity, or under a single management system. This rule is put in place to prevent common area circuits from being affected by the actions of individual tenants or potential non-payment of electric bills. By ensuring that common area branch circuits have separate sources of power, the reliable operation of essential systems in public or common areas can be maintained independently from individual dwelling units or tenant spaces. Subsection 2.10.3, 3E2 required at least one outlet where the dwelling unit is located at grade level and provided with individual exterior entrance, egress, the height shall be within 2 meters above floor level. Section 2.10.3.14, an outlet rated 250, or 125 volt, single phase, 15 or 20 ampere rated receptacle outlet shall be installed at an accessible location for the servicing of heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration equipment. The receptacle shall be located on the same level and within 7,500 mm of the equipment it served. The receptacle outlet shall not be connected to the load side of the equipment disconnecting means. Section 2.10.3.15 Electric service areas At least one receptacle outlet is required within 7.5 meters of the indoor electrical service equipment, and it must be in the same room as the electrical service equipment. For calculation of feeder and service load is in subsection 2.20.4.5a, multifamily dwelling. It shall be permissible to calculate the load of a feeder or service that supplies three or more dwelling units of a multifamily dwelling by table 2.20.4.5 instead of part 2.20.3 if the required conditions are met. The table shows provides the demand factor based on the total number of dwelling units, for example, for 4 units of dwelling units the demand factor is 45% if 62 or more is 23%. To use this table, each dwelling unit must not be supplied by more than one feeder and must be equipped with cooking equipment and either air conditioning unit or heat equipment. Since our sample project met the conditions and load and feeder conductors and protection has been determined in previous videos. 
How about the administration in common areas loads? In subsection 2.20.4.5b, House Loads, states that, House loads shall be calculated in accordance with Part 2.20.3 of this article and shall be in addition to the dwelling unit loads calculated in accordance with Table 2.20.4.5. For our sample project, let's say the effective area is 50 square meters, for general lighting load for offices is 28 volt amperes per square meter, therefore, the general lighting load is 1400 volt amperes, since there are 11 pole mounted street lighting at 250 watts, the volt ampere is 2750. For the receptacle outlets at 11 volt ampere per square meter, we have 550 volt amperes, and for the 1 horsepower air conditioning unit at 8 amperes, we have 1840 volt ampere. Therefore, the total load to be added to the multifamily dwelling shall be 6540 volt amperes. As specified in subsection 2.20.4.5c, the connected load of all dwelling units is to be added together and apply the demand factor in Table 2.20.4.5. The general lighting load, including general use receptacle outlets, is calculated at 24 volt amperes per square meter. For the 20 amperes rating small appliance branch circuits and laundry circuits shall be at 1500 volt amperes each. The nameplate rating of all fixed appliances, such as fastened in place appliances, cooker equipment, clothes dryers not connected to laundry circuits, and water heaters, should be considered. In cases where both air conditioning and fixed heating equipment are present, the larger load between the two should be used for calculation purposes. Let's apply this to our sample project. The first step is to determine the feeder loads, conductors and overcurrent protection. Since we already determined these in previous video, we can now proceed with the next step. The next step is to calculate the total connected load of each dwelling unit for general lighting and general use outlets. Since we have an effective area of 73 square meters, this is to be multiplied by 24 volt amperes per square meter. The volt amperes is 1752. For small appliance load and laundry circuit, shall be calculated at 1500 volt amperes. Since we have 2 to 20 amperes for a small appliance branch circuit, we have a total of 3000 volt amperes while for the laundry circuit 1500 volt amperes. For the other loads, we will use the nameplate rating, therefore 4500 volt amperes for water heater, 2300 volt amperes for booster pump, 5000 volt amperes for clothes dryer, and 6000 volt amperes for cooking equipment. And for the air conditioning or fixed heating equipment we have 5520 volt amperes for 3 units of 1 horsepower air conditioning unit and 2300 volt amperes for 1.5 horsepower air conditioning unit. Add all the loads, and we will get 31872 volt amperes. Since each dwelling unit has a 20% future, it must be included in the total connected load. Hence, the total connected of each dwelling unit is 38246.4 volt amperes. For the feeder and service load of the multifamily dwelling is to multiply it by the number of single dwelling units, which is 10 units. Hence, the total load is 382,464 volt amperes. Applying the demand factor as per Table 2.20.4.5 is 43%. The total demand load for 10 units of the dwelling unit is 164,459.52 volt amperes. Since we have a house load of 6,540 volt amperes, this must be included. Therefore, our feeder and service load is equal to 170,999.52 volt amperes. To determine the ampacity of the main service entrance conductors, we divide the total feeder service load by the voltage since we are only considering a single phase. Accordingly, the minimum ampacity of the main service entrance conductors equals 743.48 amperes, refer to Table 3.10.2.6b16. However, as the maximum size of the conductor is only 500 square millimeters with an ampacity of 530 amperes, we must use multiple sets of conductors. By dividing the total demand current of 743.48 amperes by 2, we obtain 371.74 amperes. Refer to Table 3.10.2.6b16. In this case, we should use two sets of 250 square millimeters conductors per phase. Alternatively, if we wish to use three sets of smaller cables, we divide the total demand current by 3, resulting in 247.82 amperes. Refer to the table. For this scenario, three sets of 125 square millimeters conductors per phase would be suitable. Please note that these calculations are subject to adjustment and correction factors, which may vary depending on the specific installation requirements. For the main service equipment, we can use the same formula, 
resulting in 743.48 amperes, refer to Table 2.40.1.6a. It is recommended to use an 800 ampere trip circuit breaker for this capacity. Regarding the equipment grounding conductor, we can reference Table 2.50.6.1.3. For an 800 ampere overcurrent protective device, a 50 square millimeters grounding conductor is appropriate. Given the high capacity of the single phase system, it is advisable to consider using a three phase system. Coordinating with the local electrical utility in advance is necessary to fulfill any specific requirements for such a setup.